Let us come together to worship the Lord, who is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, and whose steadfast love endures forever. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr., thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray that the Lord Jesus Christ is out front as we begin this slow trek out of November into December. And that means Christmas trees and Thanksgiving pies and Black Friday and all that. And I really do pray that you are having a fantastic time. I know I am. We celebrated one year at my church in Dubois, Pennsylvania, Bethany Covenant Church. Celebrated one year and we celebrated that with our African brothers and sisters in Kenya. I also serve as an online evangelist to Jesus Deliverance Ministries online. So uh, it, it encompasses all the Africans in diaspora along with our site locations in Kenya and throughout Africa. And we had a blessed time, roughly a hundred folks online, so many in attendance, including my parents. So I definitely want to give them a shout out as well as my sister who drove them up. God is so good people. And, and when we could even celebrate that right here on in the moment, we've been running hard here for about three or four years now. So I do pray you have been blessed by everything God, is doing not me God is doing it and I really hope you see it that way and I'm just thankful to have you on the journey so with that being said let's get started our morning scripture comes from Psalm 34 17 through 19 Psalm 34 17 through 19 reads as follows the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them he delivers them from all their troubles the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them, delivers him from it all. And that's something we definitely want people to be reminded of as we go about entering into this official holiday season this week, that the Lord sees everything you've gone through, everything you experienced, and it's gonna be okay. Regardless of what you went through this year, regardless of all the stuff that was said to you, the way you was treated, the Lord saw it too. He heard it and he's going to respond. And you're going to have a very, very good holiday season, no matter what it looks like in front of you. You might not have a job or whatever. It, that None of that matters. God's going to do it and you got to believe that. And we want to pray for you right now. And if you need prayer, or desire, you know, to share your praise with the world, go to get-prayer.com. We'll, we'll have that site up for a little while longer. That way you can go through there and submit all your prayer requests and needs, and we would love to share those with the internet. That internet, you know, you gotta love it. But until then, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we bow before you, the one who hears our cries, who draws near to the brokenhearted, and who saves us when we feel crushed under the weight of life's burdens. You are our refuge, our strength, and the ever-present help we need in every moment. Today, we lift up our hearts to you in worship, offering you our praise and our thanksgiving for your faithfulness that never fails and your love that never wavers. Lord Jesus, as we gather in your name, wherever we are, fill the places we are, whether we're listening online or watching from a TV somewhere, fill these places where people are doing this with the comforting presence of your spirit. Quiet the chaos of our minds and the anxieties of our hearts so that we may focus on you alone. Teach us to trust in your deliverance, even in the midst of trials, to cling to your promises when we feel overwhelmed, and to rejoice in the hope you so freely give. Help us to love of you as you have loved, Lord, to serve as you have served us, and to reflect your light in a world that so desperately needs your truth. May this time that we spend glorify your name and renew us for the days ahead we ask all this in the name of jesus christ our savior and our deliverer amen our topic of the day is together in love together in thanksgiving and we'll be coming from ephesians 3 16 through 19 go ahead and turn there 
or read on the screen whatever you feel is comfortable for you. Together in love, together in Thanksgiving as we move into this Thanksgiving holidays this week and onward to the holiday season officially. Especially coming off of the election season we've had. This is something we def desperately need. So Ephesians 3, 16 through 19 reads as follows. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. We ask you now, Lord, to help us dive closer, dive deeper, to truly understand what you're saying here. There are many people out there hurting right now, Lord, for various reasons. Too many to count on our hands. There are people nervous and scared, wondering what the holiday season look like, looks like for them. Others are lonely, maybe because of the loss of a loved one or because of a difference of opinion. We ask you, Lord, to touch all of them. Let us remember that you are here, still on the throne, waiting for us to turn back and come back to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Together in love, together in Thanksgiving. This week we will all gather at our respective tables and dine with people we haven't seen all year. Maybe friends, I'm sure family. A lot of cooking might take place or maybe you, you'll you be doing some carry out or dine somewhere. You're, you're going to make every attempt to keep the peace. Maybe a son or daughter will bring someone or some issue to the table that you know has been going on and you don't agree with it. Maybe you've got family on the other side of the election that you're not even sure how they're going to act this season. Maybe you're not going to even invite them over because you know what you're going to get. And during that time, you might break out the Christmas tree to cause a pleasant distraction and have people help you put it up and decorate it as you talk about Black Friday sales and Christmas knowing the money is slow and some bills are going to go unpaid to quote make Christmas happen. I think we all can uh, have been there. All of this is nice when in the right spirit. All of this is wrong when you're mentally surviving the day tiptoeing around everybody's microaggressions and shaky emotional states. So today, the Lord has brought us to inspiration through his word, an ongoing call, a reminder for unity and love. It's a charge for me, to you, and for you to remember Christ in times like this. To be encouraged, there is someone to lean on when you're in the kitchen in your thoughts, maybe on the back porch as you try to steal away for the moments to regain your self-control, to show kindness at the dinner table when you've been treated a certain way by people all year long, when the biblical doctrines don't add up, when the math ain't mathin' and they've gone another way. Ephesians is a masterpiece of God's design for his people. It reveals his eternal plan to bring together a fragmented world, a broken world, and unite all things in Christ. The Apostle Paul calls believers to live in harmony, love, and spiritual maturity, demonstrating God's grace to a world that we know is watching. The letter moves from the heights of theology to the heart of practical living, showing how God's love transforms individuals and communities. And at its core, 
Ephesians invites Christians to live lives covered in the love of Christ, empowered by the Spirit. And this sets the perfect stage for what we should bring to the Thanksgiving table. Not just dishes filled with yams, turkey, stuffing, corn, homemade potatoes, those are always good, pies of all sorts. But hearts moved by Christ and actions that can reflect love and thanksgiving. So what do we put on our spiritual plates to serve everybody this week? That's the real question we want to get at. What do we want to serve up that people can digest spiritually so that we can digest our food, this good food we made and spent hours to make without the cause of worry, to enjoy every flavor, to take in the moment. We got to fill that spiritual plate to enjoy that physical plate. What is it going to take? First of all, I need you to add prayer. Many of you are going to mess around and go into the holiday season spiritually blind and get caught off guard. You're going into an environment where people have lost jobs, loved ones, those who center their hearts around politics of the day and loss will be distraught and they're going to bring all of these emotions to your table and you won't be ready because you didn't pray before all of this got started. And why are we praying? We're praying because we don't want to handle any of this on our own energy, emotions, thought processes, but we want the Holy Spirit of the Lord to take over and provide the necessary direction for what is to occur. Because the love and thanksgiving we desire to show and receive will begin with praying just as Paul prayed. And praying for what Paul prayed for is what we need to do. Look at the second half of verse 16 and the beginning of verse 17. It says, Paul prays that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. You are praying the Lord provides you with the strength and spiritually in that vein to do his will physically. And when his will is done physically, the fruits of his labor through you will be seen and enjoyed. This isn't the case of praying for strength that you're going to utilize for your own thing. No. This is by God, through God, for God. And you get the benefit of giving God the glory for great things he has done, is doing, and will do. Why? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And as you add that prayer to your spiritual plate, next I want you to add faith in God's power to that plate. None of this happens without faith. Did you notice that? It's an anchoring statement. This first prayer is for this to occur. Does Christ dwell in your hearts not through your church work or teaching or attendance, but through your faith. This is the only pathway to glory, believing Jesus Christ is Lord, submitting to it, connecting to it in relationship, and believing in it. Tell me you have that, and I'll guarantee you a peaceful Thanksgiving meal, and every meal after that. Why faith and not you? This is a good pause to bring up a he Hebrews 11.6, which reads, And without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, there it is, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. 
Before we continue with our main text, look at the word earnestly. Why did the author use that word? In the Greek, it puts it this way. Earnestly emphasizes the personal intent of the seeker, as in understanding the outcome intensely and personally desired by the seeker. The seeking is only valuable as a motive which drives it. If what you're seeking this week is not fueled by a motive to have Jesus cover the family, cover the friends, cover the conversations you engage in, then you are on your own. In other words, don't get on Facebook with this passive aggressive post complaining about people and how they're acting and what Thanksgiving is really about and yada, yada, yada when you knew what you needed to do first and you didn't. That's not everybody else's fault. That's yours. The second part of verse 17 in verse 18, we read Paul's second prayer request to the Lord. And that is that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep is the love of Christ. To grasp how wide the love of Christ is, how long the love of Christ is, how high the love of Christ is, how deep the love of Christ is. This is the main dish here. The strong foundation of the love of Christ executed by the Holy Spirit that dwells in you that emits the power of fellowship. What does this do? It removes the concern of all things in people and who are too busy trying to figure out Considering everything that's happened to you all this year, from what was done to what was said to what you all experienced, you are able to come to that table and be authentic with them in your own love through your faith and power in Christ. And your love is Christ's love and have a meal. Let me tell y'all something. They're going to be so at all at your peace, at your joy. They're going to think you're intentionally holding back. They're going to think there's, there's another shoe about the drop and they're just trying to get through dinner. And I know they're going to come at me and let me know what I'm doing wrong and what I'm saying wrong and all these things and <laughs> it's not going to happen. You're not going to do that. You want to know why? Because of everything that Christ of the Holy Spirit is going to give you on the inside and what's going to be emitted from the Holy Spirit in you to the outside. That through your actions and your words combined, the one thing you've been scared to do, you'll be doing and don't even realize it. What is that? Discipling. Discipling. And so many are scared to have those rough conversations, but you're going to be emitting that fellowship that's going to have them rethinking everything they thought about you. And that's going to give God the glory because they're going to know you go to church. They know you're a Christian. In fact, some of these people at your table are going to be Christians. I mean, let's not forget here. Let's not forget who Paul was talking to here. He's talking to Christians. And if we're going to be real about it, during the holiday season, those are some of the hardest folks we're having trouble with. And, and, and there are some unlovable, unreachable Christians out there that have gone the way of the world and called it the gospel. 
And yes, they're going to be at your table too. They're going to bring their version of the gospel. They're going to bring their version of love. And they're going to bring all the stuff and things they brought from the world, dipped in some holiness when it's not holy. And they're going to call it holy. And they're going to sit at your table. And they're going to present this other gospel. That's what they're going to do. And they're going to think their gospel is your gospel when it's not your gospel. Because your gospel is the gospel of Christ. It is the God of the Bible. It is not the God of this world that looks like Christ, but it's not Christ. That looks like the gospel, but it's not the gospel. And yet, everything you say and do will reflect everything that Christ is and what he's done for us. And it's going to completely cover that. So don't worry, relax, it's going to be okay. Finally, quench it with the refreshing superiority of God's view. After you've ingested prayer, after you have ingested the faith in God's power, after you've gotten to the main dish of, the, of that strong foundation of the love of Christ executed by the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, that's emitting that power of fellowship, I want you to quench that. Make sure it gets all the way down into your soul with the superiority of God's view. Look at verse 19. It says this, this love that surpasses knowledge. Stop right there. Now, the world's foolish interpretation of love is love, not your personal definition of love. No, no, none of that. We're not talking about none of those. This love, God's love, surpasses. This is a love that overwhelms our limitations, overshadows our fears, and outpaces our expectations. It surmounts every obstacle, outlasts every failure, and outshines every other love. Paul's, engage, uh, Paul's language challenges us to grasp a reality that goes beyond our comprehension inviting us into a relationship with a God whose love and power are truly limit, limitless to the point that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth, born of a virgin who lived um, and dwelt amongst a world that did not recognize and rejected him and eventually would kill him via crucifixion, never knowing that was his immediate plan in the first place, to come and to die for the sins of the world. And I thank God the story doesn't end there because three days later he rises again with all power in his hand, all the authority, and he did it to save us from our own wrath, from the wrath of God. He sa it saves us from the wrath of God. He does this knowing that even while you're still in your sin, he still goes to the cross for you. And you might be out there right now that don't even realize that. You're thinking probably you got to get right first to understand the cross. Bring it all to the cross. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave it there. Bring all the imperfection. No one cares when it was the last time you came to church. No one cares when was the last time you prayed and read your Bible. Bring all the mistakes. Bring all the lost time. Bring it to the cross. Leave it there. If not for the first time, or maybe this is your 3,000th time, turn back to the Lord and repent and be cleaned of your sin. Find this peace that goes beyond understanding. Find this love, God's love, not the world's love that has failed you. Find God's love. And understand what that is like. Why? That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God so that you can make an impact for God's kingdom and not get caught in worthless debates over junk 
in hopes of not presenting the gospel just to be right. Be righteous in what you say and what you do. Because when they leave and the memories of the visit come up again during the holiday season, you want to be remembered in a way that strikes a pulse, not flatlines faith. You don't know if these words will be your last words. None of us know the day or time when it will be our turn to take our last breath. Don't let them be words that turn folks away from the glory of God through Christ Jesus. Don't exit life that way. Remember that as you are sitting around that table, wondering and waiting for what's to come, start off right. Give everything to God through Christ Jesus. Give it, give it all to Jesus. That way you can have this peace. Your house is covered with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is through the kitchen, it's through the living room, it's in, in the areas of fellowship. And who knows, you might just shock yourself. And if you do, it will let you know just where your faith level was and where it needs to be. Okay? All right. So, as we close, be sure to go to get-prayer.com for all your prayer needs and as you go about your week, keep that in mind. This is, this, is, this is where you can shine. This is where God can get the glory and you can get some peace and a full belly like the rest of us. Until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we will see you next week. You take care.